playlist, Courtney, and today is sort of a football vlog. Um, I am going to go and take the Anfield tour and show you it. It's the stadium tour. Going to see the dressing room, the tunnel, the Lissa's Anfield sign, see Anfield partially empty. There'll be a few other people obviously on the tour with me, but other than that, the stadium's empty, which is pretty cool, I say. Um, but yeah, you get to see sort of the history of the club. So, stadium tour and the museum I'll get to do. Um, and I'm going to show you a bit of the club shop as well because I've realised I've never really shown any of that in a vlog. So, stadium tour, museum and shop. If you enjoy this, let me know. And if you have any questions about it, put in the bottom below. And I think I might do this again once the summer break happens because obviously there'll be new shirts out, there'll be that like to look at. Because I like going every year to see the dressing room with the different shirts. I'm just weird like that but if you have any questions about it put it down below if i can answer it if it's something you need to know quick i will answer it in the comments or it'll get put into the next video so keep an eye out for that but yeah it is i've not done this since october last year um so i thought with the world cup break on and they also had a black friday deal on it also if you have a membership card the membership card does get your money off a tour at anfield which is pretty cool um, but yeah, let's go Anfield. So first stop is the club shop, which currently has 20% off for Black Friday. So if you're seeing this and off it's still on, definitely go and check it out because it's on everything. It's on the kit, the training gear, all sorts. And you've also got the World Cup on inside. So as you walk in, it's got this Anfield. And then it's got the names of every single player that's ever played for us on both sides. So definitely try and find your favourite players. I always do. So when you first come in, this is where they have all the current gear, which is like training gear, pictures of the players, like one of the Virgin Ox, captain. And then as you go further down there, it's all the kits. There's also a nice LFC themed Christmas tree, which is right by all the tops. These are also really cool, the caps, and the lab. You can get your country's flag on the side, so this is like America. But I know there's only a few here online. I know you can get basically every country there is, and I really like them. The only thing is, I'd probably end up getting the America one. Anyone else that collects Funko Pops like me, you've got loads of LFC ones in, and you've even got the little key ring versions. So once you come out with a Nike section, you've got the tools, and then you've got like homeware and that. But then. If I keep turning, so here's the homeware stuff. You have like just normal LFC branded stuff, so it's got the kids. I think ladies is over there. And then you've got men's by the front, the little baby ones. They're so cute. So this is the men's section of the LFC. Clothes. There's some nice stuff, some nice jumpers and hoodies and polos. Perfect for Christmas, really, the polos for like your dads and that. If someone's difficult to shop for, I always say, try the LFC website for the Liverpool fan because you can get something for them. I usually get my dad a mug. But, yeah, there's loads of menswear, as you can see, a lot more than the women's and kids. So I'm upstairs now where they have loads of remakes of the retro shirts, which is pretty nice, especially when you look at the price to get originals online and the hundreds of pounds. So if you know anyone who really likes the retro gear, you've got loads of different retro tops to choose from. I mean, 2005, one of the most iconic games in Liverpool history, you can get the top for it. The Ecru top, lovely. But yeah, there was loads of different options. Fun fact, I love this one because when I went to Florida for the first time, it's all I wore the whole holiday, so every single picture, there's me in this top. So they also do blackout ranges of the retro gear, which is pretty nice and pretty smart for people who maybe aren't used to colourful clothing. Um, but yeah, really nice. Also with the retro gear, they have all the signed shirt. So here you have the on that. And then we go into the current squad. Which, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty expensive. But 
they are nice pieces of history to have. The Tiago. You can have the full squad and what a squad we've currently got. We've got Jota framed, but also you can buy them unframed in boxes, which is a little bit cheaper. But if you are going to frame it afterwards, I'd say buying it pre framed because getting shirts framed properly is pretty expensive. We have some more retro but signed shirts. So we have Phil Thompson and John Aldridge underneath. Which is pretty cool. I know we have quite a few signed shirts and they are nice bits of history I have. Up here as well we have little changing room style suiting. Um, but currently they have got the legends on so we have Aldridge, Rush, Fowler, King Kenny, Bob Paisley, Fagan, Phil Neal, Ian Callahan. Steven Gerrard and of course Bill Shankly but also up here there is a little cafe where you can get some hot drinks, little snacks and then you can sit out and look over Anfield. Also up here is where you get your shirt printed so just back there. outside the club shop now and for anyone who bought a picture on the champions wall the champions wall is located right on the side of the club shop which is pretty cool i actually saw when we won the fa cup they changed the number eight i actually saw them change it and it was literally like less than an hour after the game was finished which is pretty cool and um, but yeah if you have a picture anywhere on here let me know in the comments because i have two and i'll show you them now quickly so, you go over to Ray Clement and just over here is me and my little brother I know it's not really focusing but that's us and then weirdly enough even though we bought it months apart me and my dad are just here which is pretty cool so yeah every match day I will go over and touch them before the game it's like my little ritual I have to do it before every single match so I do that and I go over to outside the main stand where they've got the stones and um, we have one for my granddad and I go over and touch that as well and then I'm ready for the game but yeah it is really cool I really like how they've done that and how they've how they done the stones I do know Anfield Road's getting more stones put in it like pavement um, but it's sold out currently so but like I do like the little touches the club does with her so just before going into the stadium tour I am actually going to let you know how much I paid so with the Black Friday it was 40% off so that made it £13.80 for an adult instead of it being usually £23 which is like a bargain but if you have a membership if you miss out on this Black Friday deal if you have a membership you get 30% off so you're still saving quite a massive chunk um, but yeah it's always good to save money I would say a membership even if you're not gonna look at getting tickets it is worth it if you are buying a lot of stuff from the club shop but also if you're looking at coming to do the stadium tour if you think if you go on the stadium tour save 30% on that and then you go into the club shop and you spend the money in there I think a membership is like 27 28 pounds the money you are saving is gonna probably is be more than that so it's worth it getting it just for that so again here's the club shop and although I will be going over towards the cop first to go into the museum I have to go and check in at the stadium tour first to get my wristband to say I can go in so I'm going to head in there now so this is where you come in and they've got pictures, past, present all iconic moments like Ali celebrating with my absolute lover and then you check in at the desk here and then you will get taken in down there just checked in, got my wristband, um, but I'm going to show you now, so this is where I've just checked in for my stadium tour and I'm going to show you how it got over at the museum, so this is outside the main stand, you've got the club shop here and then we're going to head around towards the cop. So we're outside the cop now and you've got the Bill Shankly statue and then if anyone remembers the old club shop which is now the cop bar it says museum and boot room sports cafe this is where you want to go in um, and it will take you up to the museum so here is the entrance to the museum 
so we'd start off literally straight at the beginning of our history which is for those who don't know Anfield is actually home at Everton first and this was our first strip if I remember correctly and um, we actually played in blue and white because we used to be part of Everton Football Club which was St Domingo boys and when we split this was all we were able to have so it's a nice little section about how the club was born see as you go around there was massive bits behind besides each little window telling you a bit more about the history there's a section here which is literally all about the goalkeepers in our history which is absolutely awesome i am waiting for alison becker to be added on but you know what it's pretty cool to see it especially when you look and you go They're the first gloves ever worn in a football game um, worn by ray clement and then we go all the way down to Dudex Top from the Legends game. And then you go into the boot room, which is about the 1920 season, which we all remember because you go from the year we last won the league to the year we won our first Premier League title. And I just still love that kit. Sorry, but it is beautiful. But it has all little items that players wore just throughout the whole campaign really, which is really cool to see. It even has a winner's medal, which is from Jordan Henson. It is the captain's little section. It's got his boots, his captain's armband, and of course, most important thing, that medal. There is two, in here, there's two legends that sadly don't play for us anymore, but we've got Sadio Mane, who we all still love. And then the absolute cult hero legend, Divock Origi, who I still miss to this day. I think this season we could have used them quite a bit. So there's another section here that's got a massive picture of them celebrating in the change rooms after being given the trophy, but it's got loads of the shirts, balls. Carlsberg gave them massive bottles with champions all over it, and this one's actually signed by quite a few of the players. And then what I think a lot of us will have the Champions programme, which I have it and I absolutely love it. I think you can still get it on the club website if you haven't got it. But it's a nice piece of history to have since obviously a lot of us well, all of us win when you lifted the trophy, so it brings you a bit closer to that little piece of history. And we have Jürgen's hat with some of his coaching gear. But Fun fact, I actually have one of these caps and it is the comfiest cap I have ever owned. But we also have pet blenders. So coming out of the boot room, we go back to just the history of LFC. And there's Gerard's kit from the FA Cup, right by the FA Cup. And also, I think a lot of us have that programme off last season too, which is pretty awesome to see. They also have a top from the final. I don't know whose top it is because I cannot see the back of it. But it's pretty cool to be able to see it right next to us. We also have the Community Shield, which we won against Man City earlier this season, which I think that game probably is my favourite game so far this season. One, because of how we played, but two, we were just phenomenal that game. This is really cool to see as well. Now they have a women's section. So we have the trophy the women's team won last season. We have Keynes' jersey with a few of the boots. It's just really cool to see that the women's is finally getting some recognition in the museum. And then we have the Carabao Cup final with the top from the final. This like whole section is just basically about last season. And then we have the actual Carabao Cup in here, which I've actually done a video of when you can go and get your picture with this, just after we've won it, and I'll link that in the top corner now. But it's cool being able to see it again, because last season was just something special. And then we have Gerard's little section, some more Gerard stuff, got a nice top one. But also, I find it really nice, Suarez's centre shirt from Barcelona, which is signed 
and it just looks so cool. It is something he gave to Gerard. Um, this all used to be in where the boot room is, but this is all stuff Gerard's donated to the museum for the time being, which is cool. He's got all his little honours. He's got a shirt he's being gifted from a German player, but also a shirt he's worn while playing for England, which is really cool. I'm going to put in, especially if the World Cup on currently. There's some nice little things to see. So this is one of my favourite sections, and it's about Salah. But it's got little things to do with them, which this little surfing Mo Salah toy is absolutely mental. There is a Pepsi can with his face on. There is a little hat someone has made of a pyramid with the Champions League Cup on celebrating six times. But you can see the little Mo Salah toy just over there. It is crazy. So here's the toy from the front. Like what I said, it's just a weird little thing that it's just dedicated to Mo Salah. And then you've got what's like the evolution of football boots, which is awesome to see. Like look how bad these ones are. But you've got Mo Salah's ones, which I think they look absolutely beautiful. Look, Torres. I think these are Suarez's. Could be wrong, but I think they are. And then we have some old ones up top here, and that's small. I can't see who they are. But. There was a golden shoe here from Adidas that was given to John Aldridge, which you can't wear it. Probably break your foot if you try to put it in, but it is pretty cool. This is like a nice little nod to the old cop. There's the old leather football. There's also the rattlers, which is pretty cool. Like there's still a few of them on the cop to this day, and you'll sat there and then you'll just hear it going during the game, and you'll be like, "What is that?" And then you realise it's one of these old rattlers, which. It's pretty cool, like it's still on the cop to this day. But then you get to see how the cop used to be. So you have an old turnstile. And then the old post she used to stand against at the game. So like I said, there's the turnstile again. But it's my little thing it used to stand against the at the game. Obviously, for good reasons now we're going to see it, but it's nice to see a bit of the old cop and how it used to be. Fun fact, there used to be a guy that would stand on the cop with this puppet dressed in this outfit. Like I said, nice to just see the history of the cop as well as the football players. There is a section to the museum which is dedicated to Hillsborough and also Heisel, which is nice of them to do. A lot of it is about the fight for justice and the Hillsborough Family Support Group, which done amazing things. We then go into the room of Champions of Europe and they have the six trophies all up for you to see. And as you can see, the ones from the 70s and the 80s are all massive and then the more recent ones are quite a bit smaller. Again, they have a programme in here. They have a top from the final. And they also have a plate from when we played against Paris Saint-Germain, which is pretty cool. But all the little history of us being champions. Then there's also a section that's dedicated to the infamous night that is 2005 in Istanbul. Along those little boots and I remember the parade bus, but I really want this Lego version. How cool is that? I can't even remember ever seeing that anywhere before. That is something really cool. So this whole section is about Bob Paisley and the reason I know is because of the Miners Lantern, which is from a town near Durham, which is where I used to live. Um, but it's where Bob Paisley was from, which is really cool. And of course, they also have a section dedicated to Bill Shankly, one of our best managers, if not the best. Him and Klopp are very close contention to each other. But they've got even got his passport, which is pretty cool. So I've just come out of the club um, museum now, which is really cool. There's loads of little bits that are just awesome to say, especially the recent history as well as the old history. So you have like our first ever top. The history of us splitting from Everton. Um, I did show a lot of what was in there, but I didn't show it all because you just need to come down and see it yourselves. It's like a pair of clocks, glasses in there, um, obviously a few of his caps because 
he's well known for wearing the cappers and the art cloth but there's loads of it in there, loads of history. You can get your picture with the Premier League trophy, which is pretty cool. I just didn't show it because it was quite a busy area. But now it's time to actually go inside Anfield, so I'm gonna head over, ready to head in. Um, but yeah, like even the museum, even if you just come to do the museum, it's a really cool thing to get to see so many pieces of the LFC history, especially for, I think, my generation getting to see, obviously, 2005 again, getting to see all the European Cups, but then getting to see loads of shirts, boots, medals, programmes, everything from the year we won the league, I think, for all of us, because we weren't able to be there. It makes you feel a bit, like, closer to have been there, because you're getting to see so many things. That was a part, massive part of us winning that trophy. So you've got your check-in desk there, and then right next to it, you get your audio guard, which is pretty cool. Um, it, I do know there's a video of it of You'll Never Walk Alone being sung that you can actually view in 360, and basically wherever you point your little phone, it basically shows you the crowd singing it, which is and it's really cool to see. But yeah. So I'm actually waiting to go in now. Um, I've got maybe like a 10 minute wait, not long, but the seat I'm sat on are actually the seats you're sitting in the stands, which is really weird to be sat waiting on them inside instead of actually being watching the football on them. But I am looking forward to it. Like I said, I haven't done this since October last year, which I know is not that long, but I've always wanted to put a video out there of this and to actually be doing it. It's pretty cool because I know a lot of people aren't ever going to be able to come at Anfield for the tour, let alone the game. So hopefully you just enjoy this and if you do, let me know because I'll try and do one every year or so where there's the updates and that because I know it changes a lot but we'll see how it goes. Iconic flags and banners that have flown on the park over the years. The cop is roughly about 92 years old. So there's generations of flags that have been flown in this great stadium. And do you know something unique about the flags here in Anfield? They're all held by human beings. We don't make flags and cover up the seats we can't sell. We'll leave that to another club that I won't mention. But oh, excuse me. <laughs> They'll take the seats in the top tier of others. Now we brought you up here to start our journey with the men who put us on the map. We've built the institution. Now make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. Without these men achieving what they did for this club, we wouldn't have Jürgen Klopp here today. We wouldn't have had Rafa Benitez, all the players associated with since then. We were rooted to the bottom half of the second division table and we were destined for division three. We needed to overhaul everything at this club and Bill was the man to do that for us. Within the second full season, we win the second division, we're promoted back to the top flight. Four and a half years after taking the job, we're crowned the champions of England for the sixth time in the club's history. A feat that Bill will deliver three times for Liverpool Football Club. Let's move on now to Bob Paisley. Bob Paisley is the club's most decorated manager in the club's history. Nine years in charge, Bob delivered 19 trophies in nine seasons. Six league championships. Five European trophies, the jewel of the crown being three European Cups. From 1981 to 2018, this was the only man to win three European Cups with one club. The greatest manager we've seen at this club today in terms of success, Bob Paisley. Moving on now to in 130 years of history, Liverpool have only ever had one Scouse manager. And our first and only Scouse manager did something that no other manager could do in England to that date and that was win a major treble. So this club was the first to win a major treble in England. And it consisted of the League Cup that we won for the fourth year in a row, beating Everton that year in the first ever major cup final to contest a derby, winning 1-0 via the replay. We'd also picked the Blues to the league title that year, and we'd win our fourth European Cup against AS Roma 
in their own backyard in front of 85,000 Roma supporters, winning by virtual penalties thanks to Bruce Grobelar's good old wobbly legs. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you, not Sir, King Kenny Daglish, the greatest player that has ever worn a Liverpool shirt. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I was a lad on the terraces here, my hero's Robbie Fowler, that's with my era. Steven Gerrard, I'd say he's the greatest scouser to ever play for Liverpool, but in my opinion, the king is the greatest ever. And this is my logic, okay? My grandkids, they won't have seen Gerrard or Kenny, so they'll have to look through the history books. And they'll tell you Kenny's the greatest based on this idea. Kenny won six league championships, four league cups. In his first season, he scored the winning goal at Wembley to make Liverpool the first British side to retain the European Cup. Oh yeah, and he won three of them as well. Then at 34 years of age, he becomes the club's youngest manager, our only player manager. Everton were running away with the league, 10 points difference. He didn't play the first half of the season until Bob Paisley rang him up and said, son, put your boots back on and start playing. The second half of the season, we never lost the game, that 10 point gap gone. We beat Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, we're the champions. We beat them 1-0. Kenny scores the winner. We lift the league title at Stamford Bridge's backyard. <laughs> Our first ever foreign import as manager, so for 106 years, we only had British coaches. It wasn't a rule. It's just the world was different back then. It was harder to travel around, wasn't it? But Gerard brought us into the mob day era. He was one of the first to introduce the sports science and nutrition to Premier League clubs. And in 2001, delivered a great year, arguably one of the greatest years in our history, because we won five trophies in a calendar year. In fact, it was under six months. We won the League Cup, the FA Cup, the UEFA Cup, the European Super Cup, and the Community Shield. For some clubs, that would be the greatest year in their history, but it's one of our best. Now, moving on to this man. I've personally started calling him Mr. Marmite, because in this city, you would either love him or you hate him. But you know what? He might have managed our rivals. He almost got them down, but it wasn't <laughs> to me. It wasn't to me. But you know what I say about this, guys? Now, if you're with your wife or your husband, don't admit it, okay? But don't class your wedding night as the greatest night of your life. <laughs> Rafa Benitez gave you the greatest night of your life, let's face it. Because Rafa gave us the greatest night of our lives, the tactical masterclass that was Rafa Benitez. And as the world of football outside of Liverpool, they kindly regard that as the greatest comeback that's ever been seen in a football and final. So do you know what that means, red men and ladies? Our club not only played, but we won the greatest Champions League final to be contested to date. And in true Scouse fashion, that's not enough for us. We want something else. Oh yeah, we'll keep the European Cup forever. It's that beautiful big red trophy that I see you lifted that night in Istanbul. I'm going to take all of you to see it later on. Oh. So we're in Anfield now. There's the cop, Kenny Daglish stand, Anfield Road, and we're in the main stand. But you can see some of the expansion, and it is absolutely massive. There's so much room that they're ready to put the seats and the roofs in. It looks Phenomenal. People often ask, what does Liverpool mean to you? Well, it's our Liverpool home, it? it's our house, our place of worship. Like any house, we've got a back garden. And at the bottom of your garden, you've normally got a garden shed, haven't you? Okay? Yeah? Do you want to have a garage? Right. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Jurassic Sorry, Dulles Park. <laughs> No, do you know what? That was just a little joke of saying a bit of banter, but do you know what? There's a bit of truth in what I say that about a wooden stadium, a wooden shed to the same, because that is made of wood. It was the first ever stadium in football. Stadiums before then, but it was always converted to cricket, athletics, horse racing, etc. That's the world's first football stadium. And it was built in the late 1800s, so you can understand why its infrastructure is made of wood. But now as times have gone on, we're in the 21st century, they need a more modern stadium. 
So they are moving. If you look over to the left, can you see the high rise and block of flats? And a fleet of cranes to the right hand side. That's Bramley Moor Dock. Apparently, it's not going to be ready next season, but the season after. And watch them lose to Liverpool, which is win win for us. <laughs> but for me, the biggest game of our season is not Man United, it's not Man City, it's Everton. Always has been, always will be. And this is the way I always explain it to people outside of the city. You play Manchester United or Manchester City and you lose to them. Yeah, you get all the feeling, the joy, the ecstasy if you win, but you get the horrible feelings, don't you? And then you dread going into work on the Monday morning, you dread going back into school, and you've got a few days to prepare yourself, not when it's Derby Day. As soon as the full-time whistle is gone, your dad, your nan, your mum, your brother, your sister, they're rubbing your face in it. Because families in this city, I guarantee you, if you've got one family that's all red, and the man or the woman marries the family that are all blue, what have you got then? You've got two nans and granddads vying for the red and blue shirts, haven't you? To explain the distance and where Anfield's involved. Now, this is an aerial shot. We don't know the exact year, but we know it's from 1906 onwards. And this is the last time we redesigned and redeveloped Anfield before the main stand expansion that undertook. Now, it was done by a famous gentleman called Archibald Leach. He's responsible for a lot of structures being built, football stadia like uh, Craven Cottage, Ellen Road, did a lot of Scottish stadia as well. But believe it or not, this is the Kemlin Road end. It used to be a single tiered stand, it's now known as the Kenny Dagley stand. But this was actually all the materials, this was the old main stand. They took it apart bit by bit and moved it around to the other side and reassembled the old main stand that was in there from around about the late 1800s. We built the new main stand, we built the Anfield Road end, again that was just single tiered. And this area here, can you see this? This is actually like a rock style mountain wall. And then it's got a big grass maze hill that comes right down onto the pitch side. That was Walton Brick Road. To me, you now it's the cock. So you can see this is before even the roof went on. The roof and the concrete stairs actually went in the 1927-28 season. So in a few years time, the cops are officially 100 years old. But one of the best bits I love telling everybody, and this is Kevin Road, the number 27. It's somewhere around here in the middle. Now you know when you see our Virgil walking off the camera, how cool is Big Virgil walk? He's got a practice that he's got him. But number 27, you'd turn up, you'd knock on the door, you'd be letting you go in the back room. That was Liverpool's dressing room. The front room was the away team. If we signed any players, you know when they did the medicals? Upstairs. And say we signed a player from Scotland, they come down with the wife and the kids. Whilst they're finding lodgings, they'd sleep upstairs, they'd have a room to themselves. But then once they're ready, He'd basically come out the back of the house, hop over a wall, run through the entrance, out onto the field in front of tens of thousands of footballers. Imagine if they did that to this day, it'd be crazy, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. Moving on now to 77. A year later, we win our first European Cup, beating Borussia when she glad back 3 1 for our maiden crown. The next year, the King's debut season at Wembley, he bags the winner to become the first British team to retain the European Cup. There's Tanya McDermott, you can't see him behind there, my mate, but that's Graham Sheeness in his debut season signed from Middlesbrough, European Cup winner. Three years on, and we defeat, Man we defeat Real Madrid in Paris. I'll say that again. We beat Real Madrid in the European Cup final, guys, so we know it can be done. We've done it. Alright, 1-0 that night. Do you remember upstairs when I was talking about Newcastle, they had Alan Kennedy? Yeah? Well, here's Alan Kennedy scoring the winner to beat Real Madrid to our third European Cup. We mentioned 84 upstairs, didn't we beat them in the road in their own backyard and penalties. Let's go to Istanbul now. Istanbul, Milan had players, let's talk about their team. Dida, Yadu, Canesta, Paolo Maldini, Yapstan, Cafu, Piero, Sido, Gattuso, Kaká, Shevchenko and Crespo. And then a left back, we had Jimmy Traore. <laughs> Vladimir Schnitzer, Milan Baros. See the name's a bit of a mismatch there, isn't it? But you know what we had that they didn't? We had two scouts lads playing for our football club that night. And for me, greatest game that he, he played. This lad, he played every position except the goalie, and it's fair to say he was world class in every position that night. JB Carrigan as well. He was inspirational and inspiring. Jay's dude had to do a grovel at. Look at the defensive work he did in extra time, he kept us in the game. And then we have our first ever All English final against Tottenham in Madrid. You'll see the film The Shining. 
Jack Nicholson now looking at Andy Robbo. <laughs> it's Johnny indeed. Now guys, you know what happened that night. Uh, early penalty, Shala popped it away. Low, our lower than Sadie Divock or Iggy bagged the winner. But I really want to take this time to focus on Jürgen's Redmen. Because guys, especially for the younger guys, we're witnessing greatness. Because I, grew, I was born in 81. I got to see a little bit of the end of the success in the 80s. But I had to listen to those 30 years of generations telling us all, oh, you'll never see the greatest Liverpool side ever. Well, those same people are now saying the, this team's in the argument. And they are, make no mistake about it. Three Champions League Latin finals in five years. You get to one and you might win it having a lucky season, but you don't get to three finals in five years. The only way you can do that is by ruling the continent. And I believe that's what we're doing. Team room we give to Carlsberg because since the creation of the Premier League, the longest partnership sponsor is Liverpool and Carlsberg. So if you're lucky enough to get in here, you get free flow of drinks all day. You get a scarf, a programme, you get to sit in one of the fancy seats, you know, the nice cushion ones, no hard plaster if you're in here. And you get to vote for the Carlsberg Man of the Match. And after the match, the player will come in here and receive the award. So if you work for Carlsberg or you see any competitions, get on it, okay? And just before we go, how boss does that chandelier look? I want one of them in my house made of empty beer bottles. Magic. These are the glass panels off the old man main stand. We sent them to Germany, got them melted down to the chandelier face of foot in left. Just think of all the atmosphere that's absorbed over the years. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, I bet you didn't expect to see Man United shirts in Anfield, did you? Don't take the shirts off the hooks or hangers, folks, that's all I asked. <laughs> come straight in, guys, come straight in. So, the shirts that are hanging up here, let's just address the elephants in the room. This is Jamie Carragher's fault. And it's even, let's go to that famous night in Barcelona. You know Barcelona did the documentary. There's a little clip of Jordi Alba sat there crying because he knows. <laughs> right, at half time, we're Barcelona are beating us 3 1 on aggregate. Yeah? But he was the only person he knew before us that they were going to get knocked out of the Champions League. He knew it was going to happen. So this is where I throw the onus back on you guys. Because really, I do believe this. If we had a playback game anywhere else other than Anfield, I don't think we would have got the outcome that we got. I really don't. So that's where it comes to you guys. When you talk about supporters of clubs, I say we're the best because the atmosphere that's created here at Anfield, it's unrivaled and it's like no other. Because it's a photo taken of the cop against Barcelona before the second game started. So they're 3-0 down. That's that photo taken there, not felt the Champions League. Do they look like they're beaten? No Mo Salah, no Bobby Firmino, Robbo went off half time. Quoted by the great Jürgen Norbert Klopp himself. <laughs> but you know when I talk about psychology for the opposition, let's flip it and look at us now. You're having a bad day, you're having a bad day. You come and sit in here with your teammates, you look around at all the pictures. What's everybody doing? The smiling, the happy memories. So behave, your briefs, behave, and again it's the psychology. You're having a bad day, Liverpool might have won 4 0, but you might have almost let in an own goal, you might have had a below par performance as your own standards are going, so your head's going to be a little bit dropped. You're coming here, the team camaraderie's here for you, and you've got all the memories, so you can't help but walk out of here happy. And that's the design. And do you know what? I love this on the wall here. We are family. Again, none of this is to make it look pretty for you guys. It does and it's great for us to see. But everything you see in here is not for us, it's for our players. Along with the right on here. Players, coaches, training staff, fated and seen. that drawn us here to Anfield, one of football's iconic locations. And whilst we come from all corners of the world and speak with many dialects, one thing binds us together. It's the membership of a remarkable footballing family. One that features across the globe and it's roots stretch way back to 1892. Yeah, thank you.
So we have the captain's corner with Henderson chair. This is known as being the captain's corner. And it has a little quote on the side. But this is like, I love being in the plane for this one. It's just so cool to see everyone. Start 18, Benfica, that's off. One, okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it was wooden painted, that ended up in a, a B&B in the Isle of Man, apparently, because Roy Evans rescued it from a skip. The second one, he decided to do a glass version. Yes, <laughs> Sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time, you know. Four stars near all celebrities from around the world. Here's another little fact. Apparently, Ian Beale has got a season ticket in the cop. So you go from A list there to Z list. So we've got who's who in the world watching the games here. I just want to draw your attention over to you see uh, the core of the Anfield Road, Kenny Daglis, there's two glass panels there. The first one, that's the studio, so that's where the pundits will sit. I was there for the up in the upper Anfield Road end for the Rangers game. And I remember there's about 20 minutes left to go right and you saw Rio Ferdinand and Ali McCoy. they looked like they were kicking every ball and popping into it. Then you'd have Michael Owen with one of the producers covering him, sort his fringe out for the last 15 minutes of the game. So you get to spot interesting things like that there. Above there though we've got a sensory room so if we have any customers who maybe have a bit of a panic attack, maybe suffer from autism etc and they've got friends and family with them, it's not fair to expect us to leave the game so we'll take them in there so it's a more comfortable environment for them to enjoy. Um, and then over there as well we have got the voice of Anfield, the iconic voice of Anfield, Mr George what? Sefton. He made his debut in the job, the very same game Kevin Keegan debuted for Liverpool back in 1971. So if you're younger than 50, you'll have never heard anyone announce a goal at Anfield other than George Sefton. Absolute legend in the game. There's Trent's corner taken quickly. Straight over to Divock Origi. Go! <laughs> the ball, when it moves side to side or backwards and forwards, the crowd moving you. And everybody used to charge the cop when they'd be attacking. So you'd have to move, otherwise you'd lose a shoe. <laughs> and my granddad told me that would say, good few pints in here. He only had two toilets. So if you... <laughs> oh, that's why we're always recommended to bring a newspaper with you. Yeah? <laughs> and all I'm going to say is, China have got the Yellow River. Well, this was our Yellow Mersey back in the day, OK? <laughs> And I'm going to try and really condense this down. Long story short, Shankly got asked, what's your favourite group, what's your favourite song? And like anything, Bill will turn it into football and go, no, music, not for me. Gets me out of trouble with the wife though. Because flowers only insult her when I come back from Anfield and Melwood early hours of the morning. So I'll take you to the theatre. My favourite musical is Carousel. 
there's a beautiful song in there called You'll Never Walk Alone. And whenever I've heard the words of this song, it's always reminded me of the people of Liverpool, but more importantly, our supporters. And with a young group from Liverpool doing the cover, I'll pick that as my favourite. So obviously everybody knew, it went to number one in the charts, it was the loudest song sung on here. But we won the FA Cup after 73 years of trying in 1965. A full time, the crowd was singing You'll Never Walk Alone as a salute to Bill. So what he decided to do was get the FA Cup parading around the pitch. Didn't get to see it in his spectrum as we do today. Black and white on the telly or the newspaper. So when some of our injured players paraded around minutes before kickoff, by the way, this place erupted. But when it came past the cop, something magical happened, guys. Flags, scarves, banners were lifted up in the air and they started singing, you'll never walk alone. The entire stadium joined in the singing and just by luck, chance, faith, our boys ran out onto the pitch. And what I've explained to you there is what you witness every time you watch a game at Anfield. And it was just by, to say, chance, faith, it became. There we go, stadium tour done. Had an amazing tour guide called Kenny. As you can tell, he probably got the name from being born when Kenny Daglish was the absolute king on the pitch. But he was absolutely amazing. Um, I've tried to condense it down as much as I can, but you get so much information about the club and and fields and just the team and everything that goes in to the Liverpool Football Club. You get so much information on it. It is ridiculous. I learn new stuff on it which is very rare for me to be able to stay on the stadium tour because i've grew up so close to it but yeah even i've learned something though which is pretty cool um but yeah really enjoyed it like i said if you're in liverpool plan a trip to liverpool definitely like come and check it out even if you're not a football fan or you're not a liverpool fan it's really interesting and there's so much to say it's like it's just really cool especially for the young generation there's a few kids on this and they absolutely loved it but that being said, I hope this filled the World Cup gap for you. Obviously, I had to get back to Anfield. I can't, like, before Christmas, not go to Anfield. So I had to get back to Anfield. I absolutely loved it. It's made me miss the football even more now, though. Um, so, yeah, hope you're enjoying your World Cup break. Let me know down below who do you think is going to win the World Cup. But well, I'm not sure after the game I saw the other day. So, it's just a very weird World Cup all together. But that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye!